it is understanding how God leads. Understanding how God leads. In the first and the second service, God's servant taught us, shed light upon the word of God for us. And he released the blessing of God upon our lives. I want to encourage every one of us to get the tapes, the first and the second service, and let us go and listen to them so that the blessing of God will rub upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. As a way of introduction, we're told that the need to understand how God leads cannot be overemphasized. We cannot talk about it too much because even though God has ordained us as his children, as overcomers, he has ordained glorious destinies for us, enviable destinies, prosperous destinies for us as his children, that destiny cannot be accomplished without God leading us. That destiny cannot be fulfilled without God himself leading us. We see in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, from verse 26, Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. We can see the glorious destiny God has ordained for us. There he said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 27 and God created man in his own image. In the image of God created in him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The bottom line there is that God has created us as individuals to dominate, to rule, and not to be dominated. God has created us to be above. God has created us envy to our generation. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, he said, you are the salt of the earth. You carry beauty. You carry what the earth need, what the world need. You are so important to this earth. You are not a byword. You have a glorious destiny in Christ. And if you read further in verse 14, he said, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill that cannot be hid. A light of the world. That is talking about a beautiful destiny. Everyone loves light. Everyone is always, whether intentionally or intentionally, Directed, attracted to light. It talks about beauty. Where there is light, everywhere radiates. Everyone you know, gravitates towards where there is light. That is such a destiny that God has given unto us as individual. But to fulfill this destiny, we need God's direction. Without God's direction, 
this glorious destiny cannot be fulfilled. It cannot be fulfilled by the strength of man, by man's knowledge. Praise the Lord. Our glorious destiny cannot be fulfilled by man's effort. All through the scripture, those giants in the scripture couldn't fulfill their destiny without God guiding them. Men like Abraham. He was just there until 75 years when God met him. Before God now started directing him and told you, I have made you a father of many nations. God took over his life at age, 25, at age 75 and he became great. He fulfilled his destiny. And we have a lot of people there in the scripture. That when they encountered God, they were able to fulfill destiny. Our own shall not be an exception in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, let your amen be the loudest. How can we access this divine guidance that is very important? How do we access divine guidance? Number one is through prayer and fasting. Through prayer and fasting. The challenges that many people are faced with today will not require more than prayer and fasting. We never require more than prayer and fasting. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, God stated there clearly, Is not this fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? In other words, this fast is what I have chosen for you to navigate your way through this planet Earth successfully. This fast is chosen for you to identify the right path to follow, the right step to take. If only someone will wait on God in a fast and ask God question, God, what is the way out? We're told in the first service, many people went before the Lord. Some is just three days. God, what is the way out? What step must I take? Must I take? Where should I go? And God guided them. And today they have testimonies. Praise the Lord. In that same Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 11, he said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. When you seek him in fast and in prayer, when you seek him genuinely, when you seek his face, he said he will guide you continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that sh shall be of thee shall build the old way place. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the path to dwell in. Praise the Lord. He said you shall be like a watered garden. In other words, it will take away every form of reproach every pain, every disappointment, it will show you the way out. Somebody will get the way out in the name of Jesus. Prayer and fasting. God's servant, the presiding bishop told us when the church newly started, there was no growth. The growth was not there as expected. And he said, told the remaining, the staff, 
fix three days of prayer and fasting to ask him why the church was not growing. And on the third day, God manifested himself and told him the reason why the church was not growing. And that was it. The root of that power of darkness was dealt with. And from that moment, the church kept growing. So one way to access divine guidance is through prayer and fasting. God is not a magician. You shall seek me and find me when you seek for me with the whole of your heart. The lazy one will not be able to receive anything from God. It's only the serious one that will be able to receive something from God. The ones that are disciplined. So, you want divine direction. Prayer and fasting. Genuine one is one of the ways by which we can be divinely guided. In Ezra chapter 8 verse 23, Ezra 8 23, so we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of us. God is not a partial God. When you seek him according to his word, you receive your testimony. What other ways to access divine guidance? Number two, remain in love with God. Remain in love with God. Don't step back in your walking in love with God. In your service in the kingdom of God. Rather, keep increasing in your service in the kingdom of God. In John chapter 15, verse 15, he said, Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Walking in, in love with God, serving God and the interests of his kingdom in love, makes you, you know, a candidate for divine direction, for divine guidance. And one thing we must note is that you can't prove to love God if you don't love the people around you, if you don't love sinners. If soul winning is not your delight, there is no proof that you love God. If taking care of the people around you Going out there to bring them into the kingdom. Invite them to church. Those your neighbors are just there. They are not going to church. And you know, God is always speaking to you. Invite this person to church. And you pretend as if you don't hear. There is no proof that you love God. If you don't love those people that God put around you to bring them into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. So, you want to be divinely guided. Remain in love. Remain in love with God. Keep advancing his kingdom. Yes, the midst of the year is over. But kingdom advancement endeavor is not over. We must keep showing our love towards God and towards his kingdom. Praise the Lord. How do we access divine guidance? Through heavenly vision. Through heavenly vision. Acts chapter 16 from verse 8 to verse 10. Acts chapter 16 from verse 8 to verse 10. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him. Saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we, we endeavored to go into Macedonia. 
assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. He received divine guidance through vision. He received divine guidance through vision. Many, or let me say some, even have this, this gift, but they are not using it. Praise the Lord. But as God's servant comes up to release the blessing of God upon our lives from today, I see God releasing fresh gift upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, having known some of the ways by which we can assess divine guidance, what are the proofs of being led by the Spirit? How are you sure that what you are doing is God that is, you know, that is guiding you? Praise the Lord. How do you prove that you are being led by God per time? Number one is through supernatural confidence. Through supernatural confidence. Supernatural confidence. In Exodus chapter 14, from verse 13 to 15. Exodus chapter 14, from verse 13 to 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which is with you which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall not see them again no more forever. In verse 14 he said, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of the Israel, that they go forward. One of the proof for divine guidance is confidence. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I know one thing, the presence of God is with me. God is the one guiding me. So when God is the one leading you, you are full of confidence. When others are fidgeting, when others are panicking, when others are not sure of what will become of them, of what the outcome of the step they, they are taking, you, are, you know that the God is the one leading you. Praise the Lord. The moment fear sets in, God is not there. The moment fear is ruling your heart, know that God is no longer there. Praise the Lord. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. Proof of being led by the Spirit. Number two, divine strength. Divine strength. When God is guiding you, he backs you up with supernatural strength. Strength from above. That when others are failing and are falling, you keep standing, you keep going, you are still there, pushing forward. That is the evidence that God is the one backing you up. You, you know by yourself that <laughs> you are not using your own human strength, divine strength. Like we see in the book of George, uh, Judges chapter 6 verse 14. Judges chapter 6 verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might and thou shalt save the Israelites from the hand of the Midianite. Have not I sent thee? Even Gideon knew that himself cannot do anything. But when God is the one leading you in any adventure, the strength required is provided. Praise the Lord. The strength required is provided. The strength required is supplied. So, we need to keep checking at every point in time. You have prayed for divine direction. Check using these parameters. Check and check. Am I doing the right thing? Is it God that is guiding me? And when you check all these parameters, as we have been hearing it from God's servant since the beginning of this month, and you are able to see those measures, you know that God is behind you. Praise the Lord. And quickly before God's servant will come up, 
Let's look at some tips for divine vengeance. Today being our covenant day of divine vengeance. We all know, as we have been told, that the year, this year 2021 is prophetically ordained. Our supernatural turn around the year. That is what God says. That this year, we are going to experience supernatural turn around. And God is not a man that should lie. Whatever he says he will do, that is what he will do. He has never changed his mind. And he will not change his mind. Praise the Lord. In Amos chapter 3 verse 7, he says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he, he revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophet. And God's servant, the prophet over this commission, has told us, this year God will turn us around supernaturally. But more often than not, until God of vengeance show up, the wicked may never give up. Until God of vengeance showed up, the wicked may never surrender. The wicked may never just give up. Just as it happened in the land of Egypt. God told them, after 400 years, they will come out. And then when they are coming out, they are coming out decorated. They are coming out with wealth. <laughs> but 400 years came, accomplished. Pharaoh said they are not going anywhere. 430 years. The devil said they will not go. And God told Moses, go there and bring my people out. <laughs> and Pharaoh insisted that they will not go. The word of God will not be fulfilled. And God said, if you re refuse to let my children go, I will kill your firstborn. In other words, vengeance is coming down. And that was what happened. The God of vengeance visited the camp of the Egyptian overnight. Every firstborn in every house died, including the firstborn of Pharaoh on the throne. Quickly, same night, Pharaoh said, go. Go. In fact, don't wait till daybreak. Go right now. Begin to go now. That is what the God of vengeance will do. God's servant will soon come up to release the blessing of, of God upon our lives. And I know, whatever the enemy that might be holding you down, say you will not receive your testimony. Say you will not enter into your turnaround. The God of vengeance will visit them in the name of Jesus. God uses vengeance among others to enforce the delivery of his agenda. He used vengeance to enforce the delivery of his agenda. In Isaiah chapter 63 verse 4, he said, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my, of my redeem is come. The day of vengeance is in my heart, and today is such a day. Praise the Lord. The God of vengeance will manifest in, on your behalf in the name of Jesus. But we must understand that it is our redemptive right to invoke vengeance upon the wicked. Many people keep pitying their enemy until some of them even lost their life. Praise the Lord. It is our redemptive right to invoke vengeance upon the wicked that don't want us to to enjoy the blessing of God. Psalm 7 from verse 9 to verse 11. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God tried the heart and reigned. My defense is of God. We saved the upright in heart. God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If God is angry with the wicked, why are you pitying the wicked? Why are you pitying the wicked? I had the, I, I had the testimony. This woman was the one behind the, the pre predicament of his son. Praise the Lord. 
According to the son, the mother wanted to initiate him into the world of darkness. But he, re he refused. And that was it. That was his offense. The woman dealt with her own son. And he was on his way. He was tired of life. He was on his way to go and commit suicide. And he met one person from the church. And he gave him a flyer, inviting him to church. And he told him, if you come to church, everything that is troubling you, God will put an end to it. And that was it. He went to church. He located, Win he located Winner's Chapel and attended the service. And that was it. As he was returning, he came out as a first time. I mean, as a new convert, they gave him a package with Bishop Oedipo's picture on that package. He took it home. <laughs> he was staying with his sister. He said, as he was about to enter, he was Muslim. He was from a Muslim background. As he was about to enter his house, the sister saw, he said, what is it? Ah, with the picture. He said, you are not bringing this thing inside this house. He said, if you bring this package inside this house, something will spoil in this house. <clears throat> but one way or the other, he had already given his life to Christ and that was it. Same night, God appeared to the mother through Bishop Oedipo. And he said, the mother said, when, he called, when she called, said, he saw, she saw Bishop Oedipo said, let my people go. Let my people go. And that was it. God delivered this young man supernaturally that day. And same day, the mother died. And everything concerning his life was supernaturally turned around. Just attending service once, the God of vengeance visited the camp of his enemy and rescued him. That is why if you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. <clears throat> that is how the enemy has been cheating you. Praise the Lord. That's how the enemy has been cheating you. And if you refuse to give your life to Christ, the enemy will continue to cheat you. But I know you are here, you are wiser than that. The enemy will not continue to cheat you again in the name of Jesus. That was how he was delivered. The mother died same day. As God have released the blessing of God upon our life today, you are entering into your own testimony in the name of Jesus. As God releases his vengeance upon our enemies, our supernatural turnaround package shall become an open reality this year. Your testimony will just begin to manifest this year. All you need to do, just get set. Just get set. As the prophecy will be coming through the mouth of our, our father, get set to receive your own prophecy. I'm telling you, you will return with your own testimonies in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 92 verse 10, he said, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. He said, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So just get yourself set. Expect your own encounter. As God's servant will be releasing that word, that blessing to our lives, you are the next person to testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Very shortly, we are going to be opening fire, judgment, vengeance against the wickedness of the wicked. Hallelujah. Psalm 7 and verse 9 beginning. No wickedness is permitted to stay in your life anymore. He said, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. If you agree with that scripture, shout a louder, amen. amen. But establish the just. You see, as long as wickedness is prevailing, the just cannot be established.
The wickedness of the wicked, they manifest themselves in diverse forms. Some are the ones responsible for untimely death in the family. You just see people dying prematurely. Dying mysteriously. The wickedness of the wicked. Some wicked forces sitting somewhere and just throwing arrows. And then you just see death happen. It must stop. Some come in form of strange sicknesses. Particular sickness hovering over the family. Wickedness of the wicked. Wickedness of the wicked. And in some cases, they will allow the family to spend and spend and spend. Borrow and borrow and borrow. In some cases, they will even sell the properties they have. And at the end of the day, the person will still die wickedness of the wicked it must cease in the name of Jesus in some families they operate in form of marital unsettlement those who are eligible to get married can't get married and nothing is wrong with them those who get married can't stay in their spouse's home they return back to the family house just because of the wickedness, wicked forces controlling such destinies, it must stop today. Every family that is at work, it is caused in the name of Jesus. Some manipulation is in form of making people's destiny just go round in a circle. They just go round in a circle. Just go round. The same thing, no progress. You are walking and walking and walking and walking just in one circle. Just in one circle. No progress. Everybody leaves them. They are not making any tangible. They are working. They are laboring. But all their labor has nothing to show because the wicked is at work. By the anointing today, such wickedness shall cease. That amen is not strong enough. Some has vowed that by their wicked manipulation, that people don't see favor. They just lack favor. Anywhere they go to look for help, no help. They will be favoring everybody. When it gets to their stone, they stop. Nobody is just willing to favor you in any form, even when they are in a position. Because some people have vowed that such lives will not enjoy any favor. Whatever evil they have said concerning your destiny, it shall return back to them in the name of Jesus. Some manipulation is in the form of misfortunes. You are just going from one problem to the other. One problem to the other. One problem to, as we are finishing one, you are entering into another one. What kind of life is that? That's not the kind of life Jesus promised us. Manipulations. Some are in the form of divorce. Devourers, the spirit of devourers. You gather money and gather money and gather money. And then you buy a car. The day you bought the car, one week the engine has knocked. You try to repair it, you keep spending money. At the end of the day, you can't even use the vehicle. You walk and walk and gather money and you buy a TV. The day you plug the TV, it blows. And then you take it to repair and the money they are charging you to repair can buy in another new one. So you keep it. You go up to buy cloth for ceremony. As they finish sewing it, after the rigors of sewing, just one day to the time to iron it, as soon as you put iron, iron, eat it. Spirit of devourers. This thing looks so simple, but there is a force behind it. There is a force. Satanic force. Satanic force. You know there are people like that, that anything they touch must spoil. Anything they touch must spoil. They too, they can't understand. They, no matter how careful they are. No matter how careful they are, they say, I need to be careful. In fact, when he's taking that thing, he will tell himself, I need to be careful.
They come to you, please let me use your vehicle just to buy something, just to drop. They, they are very careful. But anyhow, anyhow, they will still hit that car. And it's not their fault. There is a spirit at work. A spirit at work. The devouring spirit. The devouring spirit. You know, there are people like that. You don't know what is following them. When you employ such people for your business, you just see things just going down. Until they leave, you see things coming up. Praise the name of the Lord. These are satanic wickedness and manipulation against people's destiny. Any life they are involved in, today you are free in the name of Jesus. Some manipulate itself in closed doors. They just close people's doors. Graduated, you can't get a job. Years have passed. Just close the door. And they have vowed that such person will not make meaning in life. Just close every door. You also know there are some people that they are always entering trouble they don't know of. They just, they are very quick to enter trouble. They keep entering trouble. Trouble. Their second name is trouble. They are always implicated in every trouble what? that they don't know. That they don't know. Somehow, somehow, the moment they enter into a place, trouble catches up with them. And then you hear, they will tell some people, something is following you. He's always in one trouble or the other. It's Satan, manipulation, wicked forces to mess the destiny of such people. Erode such people's glory and honor. Wickedness of the devil has closed the womb of some people and vowed that they won't carry their children. Today, such yoke shall be destroyed. You see, some people keep taking in and keep having constant miscarriage. Miscarriages. Constant. 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 Mm. Wickedness. There are wicked forces. That's why we are opening fire. And, and decree vengeance. Enough is enough. To some people is the spirit of error. The spirit of error over their life. Just at the eve of their breakthrough, Satan manipulate them to commit one error. Their promotion letter has been signed. Just waiting to be issued to them. They enter office that day. They insult their boss. Excuse me, you can't be talking to me like this. Is it because I'm, I'm, I'm employed here? I'm, you can't, you can't. After he has insulted his boss, his eyes will now clear off. They have sacked him. Just at the eve of his breakthrough. Spirit, that's what we call spirit of error. You see some young ladies been praying and praying and praying and praying. Just when the testimony is about coming, a young man has just come. You don't even know who the person is. Maybe he's the brother of the one who is planning to propose to you. They just want to get one or two information. He now pushes his brother, please get one or two information so that before I come and then you go there. That's the one you look at and insult. You who have been praying and fasting, yeah, what is it? I say, what is it? That's how you people that have no job, you just be, you know, if you don't have anything to say, go and sit down. People like you don't have job, that's why. I don't have time to waste, so. I don't have time to waste. They say, won't you even listen? Listen to what? Look at him, look at his trouser. Is this trouser or short nicker? And then you insult the person. Just at the eve of breakthrough. Your place of work, just when something that is being planned, just one error. One error changes everything. You see, these are manipulation, wickedness of the earth that have just vowed that your light won't shine, that has just vowed that you won't make a mark in life. But it is over. I say it's over. Everywhere they are planned, they have calculated evil and they are, they, they are throwing satanic arrows at you. 
we command judgment today in the name of Jesus. You know there are forces that are vowed that great family that will not have any standing. That's why you find in some family you find great people as individuals but Satan just keeps scattering that family. No any relationship, everybody fighting, no unity, nothing. Nothing. Just to scatter that family. Because he knows the strength of that family. Sometimes he turns wife and husband. He turns parents and children. He turns siblings to scatter families. That's their job. To scatter families. But it is over. It's over. Every wickedness of the wicked over your destiny. Today we command vengeance in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your voice right now. Hold your bottle of oil in your hand. By the anointing such forces shall be destroyed today. Lift up your voice and begin to decree every wickedness of the wicked over my destiny. I command to cease today. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Every wickedness of the wicked over my life, over my destiny, I command it to cease today. Every wickedness. Make sure you are praying unto the Lord. Open your mouth wide. This is not a time to be quiet. This is a time to address every of such issues around your destiny. Every wickedness of the wicked over my destiny, over my life. Mom pratia to rodo susa, rogopolo peria taraga barago shata. Every wickedness of the wicked over my life, over my destiny, I command it to cease. Look at any area you are experiencing any manipulation, whether mentioned or not mentioned. Lift it up unto the Lord right now. Begin to decree judgment. Begin to decree judgment. Oh, Robedi Sata, Klatosi Kata Katososo, Robolobo Robelia Taragabaro Sata, Ragababa. Every wickedness of the wicked over my life, over my destiny, over my family. Today, I command you to cease. I command you to cease. I command you to cease. Eke Korozo, Mambrodus Kata Katosus, Roboloberia Taragababa, Rogoba. Are you sure you are praying at all? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in your understanding. Pray. Pray. From the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. Take your liberty by force. Take your breakthrough by force. Take it by force. Mon prakato susa. Roboloberia torigabara kosheketoroba. Le baragada. He said, open your mouth wide. And I shall feel it. Orobeli Satan do robo susa. Makato susa. Every wickedness of the wicked. I command judgment over you. I command judgment over you. I decree judgment over you. Oh Lord. To whom vengeance belong get. Show yourself. Show yourself in my family. Show yourself concerning my business. Show yourself against every witch and wizard against my family on bradi salatoria barada bush or rogedo susa tatarado susi atarabarados moberi ataraga baradosa neko porosa ragababa rasoto soto thank you father in jesus mighty name we are prayer in jesus mighty name we are prayer lift up that bottle of oil as this oil is blessed now, it becomes a holy anointing oil. It becomes a tool of vengeance against every wickedness. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God upon this oil. It becomes a rod of the miraculous. Lord, let it speak vengeance to the camp of the enemy. Let it set your people loosed. Let it, let it speak liberty to your people. In the name of Jesus, I decree this oil becomes an oil of deliverance. Becomes an oil of liberty. It becomes a, the power of God for healing. The power of God for breakthrough. The power of God to establish your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Now put a little on your palm right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree as this oil comes over your people, I command their instant liberties. In the name of Jesus. As this oil comes over them, let it speak vengeance to the adversaries. 
But for your people, liberty. For your people, healings. For your people, restorations. In the name of Jesus. By this anointing, whatever the enemy, whatever the wicked forces have done in your life is undone in the name of Jesus. Whatever evil they have caused is cancelled in the name of Jesus. Whatever causes that has been invoked upon your life is reversed in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, you are free from every consequences of the wickedness. In the name of Jesus. Put it upon your forehead now. Begin to prophesy. Prophesy your liberty. Prophesy your deliverance. Prophesy yourself. Out of the hands of the enemy. Oh, Leborosata. I receive my total liberty. The affliction ceases. Every battle of my life is over. No more wars in my life. No more afflictions in my life. No effect of the wicked shall find a place in my heart. In my life. Lord, I receive my total liberty. I receive my total liberty. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayer. Put a little on your lid right now. As you take it in according to Matthew chapter 3 and verses 11, 12, it becomes a liquid fire. Whatever it is that may have been planted in your system, I decree that it is consumed in the name of Jesus. Whatever effect or wickedness that is hovering inside, I command a touch right now in the name of Jesus. Take it in. It shall be unto you as liquid fire. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by the authority of your word, I hereby decree every wickedness of the enemy wherever they have gathered themselves now I release fire in the name of Jesus everyone that is the cause of your destiny going round and round their vow that your eyes will not see any good thing I command vengeance against them now in the name of Jesus anyone that have gone somewhere to tie down your destiny I command the thunder of heaven to strike down there in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has been the reason why any good thing in your life is closed right now, I decree vengeance against them in the name of Jesus. Whosoever is involved in scattering things in your family right now, the fire and the vengeance of God catches up with them in the name of Jesus. Anywhere and whosoever is manipulating the destinies of your children and have said they will never do well in life, I release God's arrow against them in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has kept blocking access to you by potential suitors and they have said you will not marry over their dead body, they are sent quickly to their grave in the name of Jesus. Every manipulation of the enemy in your career, in your businesses, and as you are planting, they are scattering. As you are digging, they are covering. And they are vowed that you will not enjoy progress and success in life. Now, I command judgment against them in the name of Jesus. Those who are planning your death, they take your place in the name of Jesus. Those that have vowed that evil will not cease in your family, it is packaged to them back in the name of Jesus. Those that have vowed that God's testimony in your life shall not find expression, they shall be ashamed in the name of Jesus. He said, No weapon fashion against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you, thou shalt condemn. Right now, every tongue walking against your destiny that are boasted with their own God, I command your God, your God that answered by fire, to burn them down now in the name of Jesus. Every witch, wizard tormenting your family, in the next seven days, we pronounce them dead in the name of Jesus. We pronounce them dead in the name of Jesus. 
we pronounce them dead in the name of Jesus. Everyone that I've said for you to marry or any of your children to marry, for you to have your children or any of your children to have their own children that over their dead body, they will not see the end of this month. They will not see the end of this month. In the name of Jesus. He said the, the rod of the wicked shall not fall on the lot of the righteous. Every wicked that is exerting pressure over your life, over any one of your siblings. Now, finally, I command them dead in the name of Jesus. I command judgment for them in the name of Jesus. As for you, every closed door is open now. Every closed womb is open now. Every closed destiny is open now. I decree finally, finally over your life, over your destiny. The snare is hereby broken. The snare is hereby broken. You have escaped. You have escaped. You have escaped. You have finally escaped. In the name of Jesus. Jesus in the name of Jesus so shall it be for you wave your hands and celebrate your victory it is done and done and done forever thank you and thank you Jesus in Jesus mighty name we are praying oh something has happened today for somebody I thought you are celebrating your victory give him a loud shout